few questions to Paul Leduc, um, and after you, um, you can uh, ask your question uh, too. Uh, so, uh, my first question to uh, to you is: um, In 1983, when you began uh, the film, there was not yet a boom um, about um, Frida Kahlo. But uh, there have been already uh, two films uh, made about her, a documentary by a Mexican and um, a fiction film by two Americans shown in uh, San Francisco, uh, six, uh, year 66. Did you know uh, these two films before when you uh, began with the work at Frida? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Uh, and no. uh, how well known was uh, Frida Kahlo internationally in this moment? I think in, in Mexico it always uh, he was an uh, important uh, figure of, or not? No. Not. <laughs> how, how was it at, this, at that moment? No, at that time now now you have Frida. It's the name of a perfume. It's the name of every Mexican restaurant all over the world. It's the name of everything Frida Kahlo now. No, at that time. Even in Mexico, she was not very well known. There were no uh, no books. While we were doing the film, one of the first books was being written, but it, it appeared more or less at the same time, more or less at the same time that we uh, had ready the film. The, f the book was published, a film by uh, a book by Hayden Herrera, which was one of the first uh, that was. Uh, the product of a uh, long research, etc., on, on, on the work of Frida. Before that, there was only a very small uh, booklet made on one of the, the few expositions, she, exhibits that she had uh, uh, in life, written by Raquel Tibol, which said exactly the opposite that what we're saying in the, in the film, or that was discovered later, not discovered, but I mean, uh, became public domain of what uh, Frida's uh, Fr Frida's life was, and uh, it, was, it was mainly because well, I knew people that knew Frida, and I worked with a script with Jose Joaquin Blanco, which is a Mexican writer, and uh, he also knew mainly Lola Ra Lola Alvarez Bravo, who was a photographer that was quite friend there with, with Frida. Frida, of course, was dead uh, by, the, by those years. But she was not really very well known because she was always under the shadow of Diego Rivera. She was known as the wife of Diego Rivera. And now I think it's the other way around. Diego Rivera is known as the husband of Frida Kahlo. <laughs> and uh, uh, at the beginning, we want I wanted to make a film. We're going to start with the period. I think it was a very interesting period in Mexico because it was a few years after the Mexican Revolution, which was a huge revolution that uh, appealed the eyes of the whole world. Many people came to Mexico to, to see what was going on not only from a political point of view, but also from a cultural point of view, because it was a, a very strong uh, cultural movement. Mainly, and mainly abroad, it was known by the murals of precisely Diego Rivera, Siqueiros, and um, Orozco. But uh, it was not only that, it was in music, it was in architecture, it was in, in the idea of a country that we wanted to build in those years. That made that, for instance, a character like Frida, uh, like Frida Kahlo, for instance, the way she dressed at that moment, it was like a reivindication of of a, an idea of nationality. She 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 dressed with a, with the clothes. You, do you listen? It's, it's okay the sound because I okay. Uh, uh, she she dressed in the in the way that mainly in the south the indigenous dress as a reivindication of an idea of nationality. Uh, architecture, the, the place where she we, we, we were able to shoot in the place where she lived in the Diego studio and in Trotsky's house, 
and mainly uh, the studio Diego was built by one of uh, the first architects in Mexico to do modern architecture, uh, Juan O'Gorman. Uh, so it was it was a, a very uh, well in, in that period um, there was also the participation of women, not only Frida, but there were a certain amount of very interesting female characters that um, in a way started with this movement of women liberation that all through the last century was so important. And uh, that many of the women involved in that movement, at that moment, I mean when we made the film, didn't even know the existence of Frida or uh, Tina Modotti or Nawi Olin or many other women. I'm talking about the women in Mexico. Uh, but all of the work started to uh, I don't like the word fight because they were not fighting, they were mainly living uh, in a way that uh, was searching for freedom and equality for women, <coughs> which now is as advanced as you know, maybe not completely solved, but not as it used to be. The story, I mean, I made, I made, we didn't make a research as to make a biography. We didn't intend to make a biography. Although I think that everything that's said in the film is more or less right. We don't intend to say it was exactly like that. It's finally a fiction film based on a real character. But we were trying to, in a way, make a metaphor about a woman that uh, is uh, trapped in her own body, trapped in her own, trapped is not necessarily pejorative, trapped in, 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 in her, uh, closed, uh, enclosed would be the best word, in her ideas, in her work, in her uh, trying to be free in all those levels. And uh, we could have chosen Tina Modotti or Nawi or one of the other women that I mentioned. Uh, Frida was maybe much more interesting for a film because uh, the fact of being able to shoot in her house, to use her clothes, to use the music that she more or less we can imagine she 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 listened because of the time period, etc. It was a mixture of invention, research, and uh, common sense, I would say. Uh, now you have much more material, and for uh, biographs, you should do another film. We, we, we synthesize in one or two relationships, many relationships that she had, either with men or with women, uh, Frida, because we were not going to the whole telenovela of, the, of, 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 of her stories. It was enough to have one or two and more or less show the kind of relationship that she had. So the research was up to the limit that we could do it at that time and up to the limit that we needed. I mean, we, don't, we didn't go further. And to tell you the truth after that, this myth about the Frida has been grown so much. To tell you the truth, I'm a little bit sick of that story. And I didn't want to read or to find out if I was right or wrong and whatever. So, for me, it's like contradictory. I, I don't think she would like that, what's going on with her name and her meaning and her figure. Um, what about the, um, the actress, the Ophelia Medina? Uh, how did you find her and uh, how was the casting? Very easy. I met her. She's a very well known uh, actress in Mexico. We were friends. Uh, we stopped being friends when we did the film <laughs> because she, uh, she didn't agree very much on the fact of not do using dialogues. She claimed, and she was right, I mean I knew she was right, that Frida was not a, a, a silent woman, who was a woman that spoke like everybody, perhaps even more. Uh, she had humor, she had, uh, you can see that on her diary and 
testimonies of the time. Um, so she was she was a bit un uncomfortable with, with the fact of not talking. So what I did is something that um, she didn't realize at the time, but uh, I, I made tricks. I, I, I shot the scene as I wanted myself, and at the end she was allowed to talk and even to improvise. <laughs> the detail uh, that I uh, saw is uh, he is an ar architect, or was an architect like you. Was. Well, architects too much. I, I, I was in the architectural school, I didn't finish, and I've never been an architect, although I think it's a big mistake of my life not to <laughs> have continued as an architect. And Urrola also was mainly a theater director, and then also studied architecture, but except for one very interesting project that, by the way, he made in Germany with a scholarship of a theater, uh, uh, solved from the architecture point of view. Uh, otherwise, he, he, he never really worked as an architect. He was a, um, a theater, a very interesting, He's, he died a few years ago. Uh, he was a very interesting theater director. He was sometimes an actor in his own place. He never, it was the only film he, he did, My, this one. And well, the resemblance and the fact that he was an actor and that he could understand the idea made him uh, ask him to play Diego Rivera. He was very satisfied because he also felt like himself being, uh, you know, people from the theater business, they, <laughs> they like being considered as Diego Rivera, uh, used to like to be considered. Okay. Um, I promised uh, that uh, time for the audience. Are there questions yeah. in, the, in the audience? Nobody? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I would like uh, to know something about how you uh, um, write uh, the scenes or how you wrote the scenes and how you put uh, her uh, Frida Kahlo's pictures uh, in the film and how you made yes um, concept about it. To tell you the truth, I don't remember exactly. I know that we wrote a script, as I said, more or less based on partially in what we knew about her, partially in what we wanted to find out, and partially in an invention. I remember that we more or less, that we quite respected the script. If you give me your address and you read Spanish, I can send you a script because it was published. And. Uh, but the, for instance, one thing just about the, the paintings, it was a very unusual and lucky coincidence. When we were doing the, the film, and without we knowing that when we read the script, when we wrote the script, or even when we prepared the, the shooting, the first uh, retrospective of Frida was being uh, to be open in Mexico. So we had... Uh, the possibility of shooting with the, there's this scene where she goes with the with the, um, a carpintero, how to say carpintero, the wood, the what? Carpenter. The, the carpenter. Uh, all the, and, and they're not all uh, wrapped, they're all originals. And uh, we could guard them with the only condition that we couldn't let, take them out of the museum where the exhibition was going to be held. And uh, so, because of an insurance problem, which made it completely worse and more, much more risky for the paintings, because we were allowed to shoot in some place in the ceiling of the of the museum, and with all our cables and all that, the risk of a short circuit and a, and a fire was much more bigger than anything else. Luckily enough, nothing happened and. Uh, with it, with it. But they're, they're real, they're real um, and the exhibit also, when you see the exhibit, is a real exhibit of real paintings of, uh, of Ria. 
So we there we have, we improvise it, but we, the, that scene was not on the on the on the on the, on the script. Uh, I had to improvise it. There was a carpenter, and the, she was going to the carpenter because it, uh, otherwise uh, we could miss shooting the, the paintings. And maybe there are one or two things that now I don't remember like that that we went out of the script. But most of most of the script was shot as the script uh, was written. How it was written, I don't remember. More questions? Well, no, but yes, yes, I'm sure there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you tell us about your future film projects, if you have some or not? Because I read that you don't focus anymore so much on fiction film. On any kind of film. Go on? any kind of film. Any kind of film. Could you tell us why, maybe? It's enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I said it already. You said that it was enough. And um, another question for me, was it uh, Cas, um, Casual in um, Espanol, uh, that uh, exactly for the 30th, uh, year, 30 years of death of um, Frida Kahlo came, uh, you made the, the film? Well, or was there such an intention that it was uh, exactly the 30th 30, 30 year of death of Frida Kahlo? When we did the film? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh yeah, you're right, but I didn't realize until no. now. <laughs> yeah, it was 54 when she died, and the film is 84. No, but it was no, it was, no, it was no. nothing of that. In films, you cannot plan that way. No, I. I uh, want to make a film this day. This <laughs> question was uh, because you told that you uh, got some um, support of the Mexican um, government uh, for that, and that maybe. Uh, that no, 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 no. Uh, no, we didn't have. Wrong. No, we didn't have any support of the Mexican government. We had uh, the film was co-produced by a private producer, Manuel Orbachano, okay. who was a very interesting producer. He was a gangster, but he was a very interesting producer. <laughs> Did work uh, with Luis Buñuel. He made uh, a couple of films with Buñuel. That was retired at that uh, 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 by those years, but he came back and he bought what used to be the oldest. Uh, producing private company in Mexico, Plaza Films, and that uh, when, when he came back, he produced these films and two or three other films uh, with Javier Humberto Hermosillo, with me, and maybe I forgot another one. And, uh, and we co-produced it with him, uh, the whole team. Uh, Ophelia, the actress, the cameraman, myself, etc. Everything went fine during the whole shooting. And we shot it in 16 millimeters, and uh, to avoid uh, all the industrial problems and laws that we had in, at that time in Mexico, union problems, etc. And uh, we only we were a crew about uh, 10 people uh, for, to do the whole film, which was more than enough. We shot in very few places and few lights and. It was very comfortable to shoot a film like that. And uh, we had no problems with Barbachano. Problems began when we finished the film. The day we finished the mixing of the sound, we went to have dinner, the cameraman, he and the editor and myself. What are we going to do with the film? And there we started to have problems. Because he th thought that the film was going to be very commercial. And uh, we didn't. We thought that uh, it was a very. It was like it happens always in cinema. We were everybody was talking about a crisis in cinema those years, <laughs> like today. And those years was a different crisis, but we still. So when we were doing the film, since we were all a bunch of friends, I mean actors, the technicians, and myself, I mean a very small crew, and we. As an anecdote, we used to say, let's do whatever we want because nobody's going to watch this film. I mean, we're free. So, which is a very good sensation. And uh, uh, our plan was to, I had, a, my first film was, uh, John Reed, was on the Berlinale in the 
what in those years was the forum, uh, the film forum. And in the film forum of those years, you could uh, screen a film in 16 millimeters. So our, our, our idea, our proposal was to go to Berlin, show the film in 16 millimeters, see what happened, and according to that, find out if it, if it was worthwhile to do more or just to leave it in 16 millimeters, show it through the chaîne de RSC and that sort of things and uh, that were existing in that, those years. And there was more than enough. The film altogether was extremely inexpensive. It cost, uh, in, in real money, it costed about $200,000. Uh, that was Barbachano. Uh, and the rest was our own salaries and things that we got from here and there. So uh, we didn't care too much about the money. I mean, that amount I think we thought we could recover. But Barbachano claimed that no, that film was going to be a commercial thing and he wanted to go to Cannes. At those years, Berlin was before Cannes, it was one after another. I mean, Berlin since changed uh, the date. So, uh, uh, we made a big, big scandal both sides and uh, we took, it took us about a year with lawyers and everything to, to, to get into an agreement that finally was to go first to Berlin, then to Cannes and see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> but for him it was completely different because for him it was an economical thing. It was... So, uh, by paying the, the, that amount of money, we were not 50-50 anymore, he would control the film. That was the main discussion. No? So uh, he wanted to make many changes on the film, which he, he couldn't do. The only thing that he did, and I hate, is at the beginning of the film, before anything happens, there's something written saying that Frida Kahlo's painting now are very expensive, and it looks like we made the film because the films are very expensive. And uh, whenever I could, I couldn't do it with this copy, but I could do it with other, I just took the, 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 the text away, no? Um, what else? Tell Eduardo to... <laughs> to wait a little. <laughs> no, no, okay, okay.